Welcome back to Zero to 60. Today we're working on this awesome BMW E70 X5 with a 4.8 and we're actually updating, well, giving the infotainment system a bit of an upgrade to an Extrons, I've got it here. It is the Extrons 10.25 inch full Android uh, head unit. And if you have been watching this channel, you know that we do really like these Android head units. Uh, this car, it obviously isn't ours. It is, a, it is a friend's car and they've asked us to do the install. And yeah, they wanted to have basically have a few more features than what the, the standard triple C unit does. What is really good about these, well, these units is they integrate with the standard unit really well. So you don't lose any of the iDrive capabilities or any of the things you need for the car, but you still get access to the full Android and any any add-on, any well, anything you can imagine you want to do with your Android, you can still do with this system. This particular particular unit runs the Cortex A53 chip. Uh, it's got two gig of DDR3 RAM, which seems to be a pretty a pretty tried and tested setup for these Androids. It is running Android 10 as well, so it should have quite a nice user interface. It should look pretty good in the car, and because it is a massive 10-inch system, it's actually bigger than the the current screen, actually bigger than the housing. So act, the, I'll, I'll unbox it in a second and show you show you what it looks like. But it should, once installed, it should actually protrude from the dash like one of the later models, like the F15s do. So it should look pretty good as well. Now, if you have seen the install on our red E53 X5, you'll know that, well, and, and the same with the E39s as well, they're a bit of a mission to install these Androids and you've got to run a patch cable from the front of the car to the back in the boot. These E70s and the triple C units are a little bit more friendly to install and I was having a look through the included installation guide you haven't got to run a cable for the whole length of the car so it shouldn't be too bad to do uh, basically yeah it does come with these sort of brochures pamphlets which this is a it's a very basic installation guide but I've never done anything on an E70 before and well this is why I was kind of excited to get stuck into it because you haven't got to pull too much of the car apart it looks like basically just just everything through the middle of the dash judging by these little pictures here and well yeah to do that you don't need very many tools i've basically got a couple of trim removal tools and screwdrivers and i'm hoping that's going to be enough everything else should be plug and play that's designed to plug directly into the car's factory harness and um yeah all this stuff is just like that's your gps antenna you got a wi-fi antenna usb cables um and so everything should just be plug and play the actual unit itself that's it there Ooh, that is a massive screen that is going to look brilliant when it's on there and ah that's okay so that's that's what i was talking about before that shape there is the original that's what houses the original screen up the front and yeah, you can see this one is so much bigger it actually it, it just sticks right out so that should look pretty cool once it's all installed yeah there's not too much to it the kit sort of gives you all the info you need to get started the only thing that i thought was a little bit weird is this speaker here which it looks like it's needed so i will install it but i'm not sure what it needs a, a speaker for. But I'll move up the front, I'll try and put you guys somewhere so you can see what's going on, and <clears throat> we'll start pulling the dash apart. Okay, hopefully you can actually see what's going on from up there, that should be a pretty good angle, I hope. The only thing I didn't mention in the intro there is if you are looking at buying one of these units for an E70 X5 or an E71 X6, make sure you do read whatever listing you're buying it from properly because there are different versions between a triple C and a CIC. The other thing is that might not be so straightforward is the car, these cars have a aux input in the center console down here and you will have to run a 3.5 mil cable which they do supply but you'll have to run it from this aux input in the glove box probably under the dash under the center console and into the back of the unit. Alternatively if you don't run the 3.5 mil cable through the center console you'll have to use something like an FM transmitter which I mean it will do the job. All right let's get into it. So first things first is pull out the AC vents. Then straight away I can see that there are a couple of screws holding the climate control in. So I'll pull them out. There's also some screws holding the screen in. And I could see on the new screen when I had that unboxed that it was it was it looked like the only way it was actually screwed or bolted into the car was these metal tabs at the bottom. So I reckon it's just going to be these two holding the screen in. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, then we'll remove the AC panel. Then unplug everything. Now, I've brought you down to show you some hidden screws that I couldn't see at first. In the Android instructions, it said that there are two screws down here, which you can see I've, I've pulled those two, those two out, but it would not budge. And if you get down really low, you can actually see that there are another two on either side. So there are actually four screws down there holding that unit in. So I'll pull those other two out now and then hopefully be able to remove that entire unit. And at that point, we should then be able to unplug the car's factory harness and plug in the Android adapter and then, well, pretty soon after everything's plugged in, start putting it back together. So it's not been too bad at all. Hmm. Okay, there it is. Hopefully you can see the back of the unit from up there. So I'll pull all of these plugs out so that we've got a bit better access. Cool, and then the big one. Cool, she's out. Okay, I'll pull that out of the way. And this here is the car's factory harness. And in the Extron's manual, it says that this green wire is the fiber optic cable, which needs to be removed from the car's factory harness and then placed into the Extron's adapter so that when you plug the adapter in, it can still put that into the unit. So I'll pull that out now, which it looks like it's just a little tab holding it in. Cool, there she is. All right, I won't bend that too hard. And so I've just grabbed the Extron's patch cable. And so I can see the provision for that there. So I'll get the patch cable plugged in. I guess you wanna make sure that obviously everything is done up nice and securely and all the clips are locked in where you want where it needs to be sorry she's a little bit tight I'm gonna plug that into its new home in there cool okay that's gone in the adapters plugged into the car's wiring harness and then that is ready to plug into the back of the unit and down here will be okay so that is the main power cable that will run to the back of the extrons unit which is over here and we'll plug in there now before I do put it in I want to show you guys the difference between the new 10.25 and the original screen so I'm gonna to have to move you again okay. so that's the factory BMW screen and there is the new Android one that is quite a big difference I'm looking forward to getting this thing fired up and seeing how she looks all right so now comes the fun part of routing the wires the first one i want to run is the power cable to get the new android screen actually connected and she's pretty busy in this dash so i'm just going to try and find a path for the plug Okay, you can just run them through the, straight through the in between where the aircon vent runs, and you should be able to get it up. <laughs> get it up. Okay. Next, we've got the GPS antenna, which you've got to be careful where you put these. Uh, all of these BMW dashboards have metal underneath the foam pad, the foam, the top pad. So you've got to try and stick it somewhere where there isn't metal, otherwise if it's blocked, then it won't get a very good signal. It does feel like just up here on the inside there, I can actually feel the foam pad, I can push, I can see the 
the dash pad moving, so I'll stick it up there and just make sure that, yeah, there's enough room for the cable to plug into the back of the unit. And we'll tuck the long wires out of the way a little bit. <clears throat> Next is the antenna for Wi-Fi. Obviously very handy with these units if you connect a hotspot to them from your phone. You then get access to the internet and you can watch Netflix, well not watch Netflix, but you can listen to uh, Audible and all those other cool things that you need an internet connection for. Okay, that area there feels like it should be pretty safe and won't actually interfere with anything. Nice. Next we've got these USB cables which I'll probably run them to the inside of the glove box but it's an electronic glove box with a button to release so I've got to, I'm going to have to plug the, wherever that trim piece has gone which I think it was the, the AC vents had the button to, to open the glove box so I'll plug that back in and then just run them into the glove box. I don't know if Adrian's gonna need them, but, well, it's useful. You can use it as a charger if you want, or um, he does have a young kid, so maybe if they wanted to play, you know, hook up, hook up a controller or something and play games on the Android, they they could do that with this. So I'll put it in there whilst, whilst we're doing the install. Alright, that's all of the additional uh, antennas and everything run through the dash, so I'll connect everything up to the new Android and then to the stereo and just power it up before everything gets bolted back in and make sure it does work how it's supposed to. Ta-da! There she is. Okay, the iDrive knob is working on the Android unit. Um, I'll see if it works. Well, actually, first thing I want to try, because um, I haven't I haven't done anything with the aux cable yet. Oh. All right, that is brilliant. So the audio is working straight away. So I haven't had to plug into the aux that's in the glove box. It's just worked straight away. So that is, well, it saves another little, little job. So that's brilliant. It all looks pretty good. This is working really well it's nice and snappy it looks good and we've got audio so that's pretty good i haven't connected the gps antenna but there's nothing tricky there that should work so i will power off the car uh, unplug it and then reinstall everything properly and basically just put everything back together in the reverse order that i took it all out and then give it a give it a proper test on the road and i mentioned at the start of the video how it integrates with the with the car's iDrive as well, uh, for like things like the car info. So if you click on car info, it takes you back to your normal triple three, triple C screen. And then you can um, see things like the info sources and yeah, all that sort of stuff and still change your climate and so on and so on. So it all works pretty seamlessly. And if you do want to get back into the Android, you just hold the menu button and it brings you back. And I think you can also exit the, exit the Android menu as well by holding that button. Yeah, you can, cool. So there you go. All right, let's get it back together. Boom. Into your home. Now... That's the car all back together. Awesome. Now I'm gonna give it a proper test run. 
Okay, I'm in the car. I've got the engine running because, well, because the AC is nice, but because I have been playing around with the unit for a little while, there's a lot of settings on these things when you first power them up. So I've basically just been going through all the menus and getting it set up for this vehicle. One thing to note is don't get carried away and throw the box or the user manual away once you've got it installed because in the user manual there is a password to get into the factory settings of the Android and all the passwords, like we've got other Extrons units and it is a different password on this unit to the other Extrons we've got on other Androids. So make sure you keep that manual handy and that password handy. That is it, it is all working. Um, I ended up picking this skin because it looks awesome and looks like a, mu like a much newer vehicle. Now I reckon the absolute best way to use these Android Android units are just a hotspot from your phone or if you've, if you've got like a, a Wi-Fi dongle that you can run a SIM card in and always have Wi-Fi in the vehicle. I have connected the phone already so I've just turned hotspot on and I'll see if it auto connects because if it does that would be fantastic. It doesn't look like it's going to. Okay, Wi-Fi is off. But, um, so it wasn't going to work. So Wi-Fi is on. See if she pops up. Okay, so once Wi-Fi was turned on, it did auto-connect. That's awesome. So back to the home screen. And now, um, well, basically, I haven't logged into a Google account because I don't. Want, I won't log into my account to then install apps that Adrian might not want. So instead, we'll just go go more apps and um, go Google Chrome, for example. No thanks. Boom, straight into YouTube. How good's that? And you can do things like. Oh, so this is just in Google Chrome. Once you've got the YouTube app or the YouTube Music app or the Spotify app installed, it is much better to use. See, look at that. Oh. You can watch YouTube. Now, straight away, straight out of the box, as soon as you plug it in, the steering wheel controls work. Volume and next track. So that's awesome to retain that function. And again, the you don't lose the ability to use your iDrive controller, even in the Android. And I have set it up so that the navigation, when you're on the Android, opens up Google Maps. Cool, and navigation starts working straight away. All right, bit of a scenery change. I didn't realize, but the GoPro didn't, it stopped recording and it didn't catch the end of that video, which to be fair, the video's dragging on a bit anyway, so I'll wind it up really quickly. And look, to be fair, all that's left to do is now pretty much review that unit. If, if you start going through the menus, that'll be a whole nother video itself, which if you do want to see that, then um, yeah, let us know and we can get the car back and go through that Android system properly and give it a bit of a review. But for now, I actually jumped in the E53, in our old E53 X5, and well, first of all, I had to catch up on some Adam LZ. But I must say, after playing with the E70 setup, it's a much nicer system to use and a much nicer layout. First of all, obviously the way the dash is laid out with the big Android screen sort of protruding from the front, like the newer models, it looks much more factory. With this system, you've still got the, the plastic bezels on the side. You've still got these, these buttons on the side as well, which don't look very... BMW like but my biggest takeaway is the iDrive knob I never missed it in this car because it never had one but after you after spending a little bit of time in the E70 it's really nice to be able to just have your hand rested on the center console and still navigate through all the menus and not have to use your finger and the touch screen particularly while driving so that was uh, that was interesting well that about wraps it up for this video as always thank you very much for watching if you do have any questions about well, the install on this E53 or the E70, then just comment below and we'll try and help you out. Thanks guys, peace out.